So welcome back uh, to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal, always looking for interesting uh, things to talk about and cover in Israel. And I came across um, an interesting blog called The Finest Dream via a social media group. And I have the two creators of that uh, here today. They're called Fiona and Finn. And for those who haven't heard um, about FIRE, it's become financially independent and retire early. Did I get that right? Yeah. Yes. Cool. Um, so Fiona and Finn, firstly, thank you guys uh, for, uh, for doing this, um, for maybe telling people who haven't heard about FIRE what exactly it is, and also the fact that you guys are doing it here in Israel. So let's start at the very basics. Can you guys explain what FIRE means? So FIRE is essentially, it's financial independence early. It's retire early. retire early, and it gives you the option to stop working whenever you want, but you need enough of a, it's like creating an extra pension for yourself to, so you have the option is not to worry about a nine to five job or whether you're working from an employer or whether you're working for yourself, you have the option to choose to work or not to work. The point is to create enough passive income to live off of. Yes. Like so you don't want to, to get to the age of 67 and say, okay, I worked 40 years of my life. Now what? You want to, you want to be able to have when you still have a lot of energy, like when you're like 55, okay, I want to go travel the world for a year, year and a half. And I don't need to worry about a job. I have the money. I'm living off of living off a paycheck that I'm paying myself and going. It's essentially like if you're going on maternity leave, when people go on maternity leave and they get paid from me, talk to me like three months in advance, and then you're paying yourself a paycheck, you're more just want to pay yourself a, a income every month from your savings investments that you have, whether it's from the stock market, whether it's from real estate or any passive income that you could create. So FIRE isn't necessarily about, um, you know, sort of a get rich quick scheme and end work as quickly as possible. What you're saying to me, it sounds like it's more about taking control and predictability over the point at which you don't have to work for, uh, for income anymore. Exactly. It's becoming work optional. It's, it's becoming work optional. It's more about that you can choose. I don't want to work anymore. I want to travel, be a full time a part of all the vadot of my kids' school and be, on, be in the school in four hours a day supporting the school without worrying about an income because I have an income. The, a lot of people are not are not um are not pursuing fire they're pursuing fi just the financial independence part a lot of people continue to work in some capacity after reaching it and well it depends on what age you reach it no it's it depends on the person and what True. they want and re some people do it some people don't we're probably going to continue working in some capacity but not full time um so i'm just interested i mean fire from what i understand there is a huge community on reddit and seems quite internet centric generally um, so how did you, did you guys come across this? Cause I understand you've been living in Israel for a while. So is this something that you heard about in the U S and decided to start after making Aliyah or did you, uh, did you come across this concept and movement here in Israel? Well, we didn't meet when we made Aliyah. Like I'm here, like I grew up here in high school and everything. So I first probably first really heard about it is from rich dad, poor dad, the book by Robert. Kanofsky. But during COVID 2020, when the first lockdown happened, we were all locked down and I was on um, paid leave due to, you know, like everyone else. I had a lot of free time and I was I was listening to oh, Timmy, um, who is Ori Ariel, Ora Ariel, and she's came a, across She's it. a famous Israeli fire person. Like she fire retired person. at the age of 30 and it's been... She got inspired and whatever. Then during COVID, she said, screw it. I'm going to Mexico for half a year. Her and her husband just like sat in Mexico with their brand new baby for a half a year and just lived off their income. So like that was very inspiring. And then it took me like a year and a half to convince you. It did take another year and a half. You were talking about it all COVID. We have a COVID baby. And then I ended up going back to work, getting vaxxed, went back to work. And then something happened at work that made me very frustrated and I ended up leaving that job. In my huff of leaving the job and finding a new one, there was this whole 
if we did this, then I wouldn't have to run towards a new one. I want to be able to make that decision. And then you found... Um, oh, yeah. And then uh, I found this this couple, um, Our Rich Journey, Christina and Amon, and they they blog about this. Now they're huge, but back then they were a lot more modest because I think they, they had just reached fire at that point. Um, so I watched a lot of their videos and I liked them because they were a couple. They were doing it together. They had two little girls. And, um, and I thought, oh, maybe it is reachable. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys feel, I mean, I think that a lot of people in Israel are just really bogged down in the kind of day to day, you know, financial survival here. Obviously we all know Israel is super expensive and uh, life here financially is difficult. So d did you guys not kind of feel a sense of maybe trepidation whereby, you know, most people here are thinking about just getting by, to getting by, but you guys are actually kind of looking a couple of steps further ahead and uh, looking at uh, retiring. Does does the kind of scale of that objective ever kind of uh, scare you guys? Um, yes, yes, and it it actually like one conversation that we have off, often is that not everybody like we are very privileged that we're not making huge salaries, but we're privileged that we have a high enough salary. And that we also have the financial know-how and organization and in-house bookkeeper yeah. to to swing this. And a lot of other people don't. So we have also been affected by inflation and by the costs of everything going up. We now spend a thousand more shekel at least per month than we used to yeah. one year ago. When we last year we set goals for ourselves for X number of thousand to invest every month. And in January and February, we were passing it by 1,000, 2,000. And now we're barely scraping that number by. And we're still hitting that target every single month. Oh, last year's target. But we're not surpassing it. And in the beginning of, in the beginning of one year ago, we were easily surpassing it. We were surpassing it most of the time. So yeah, it is hard. Um, one thing that I think that makes it easier in Israel, and this is what I tell people all the time, I don't know about easier in Israel, but my comparison, even though I never I never worked in the United States, I never lived there as an adult, I compare everything to there because I'm in American groups and stuff. And American um, employers, they don't owe you anything. And in Israel, you have your pension, you have your care. If you have a Karen Hishdalmut, you have a Karen Hishdalmut, which the two of those together is 30% 30 30 of your gross being invested every month. That's huge. So even if you're doing nothing, the Israeli pension scheme, especially if you have a Karen Hishdalmut on top of it and you never pull from either one of them, is pretty good. So that is definitely part of our fi part of our fi savings is the pension and Karen Hishdalmut. And then there's what we put on top of it. That also was very intimidating to me in the beginning until I realized we're already part of the way there because we have this state mandated savings that we've already been doing. Only the pension parts mandated. The Karen Hishdalmut is not. We're just fortunate that we have. So what, so what you guys are doing is taking the kind of mandatory pension contributions in Israel. And for anyone who hasn't heard about Karen Hishtalmud, I'm actually not sure what the exact, I think the English translation might be a provident fund, but don't quote me on that. Free tax-free, uh, relatively short-term savings vehicle uh, that one can undertake in Israel in addition to your pension contributions, which are now mandatory, whether you're a uh, employee, as you guys are talking about, or as an Atma'i, but you guys are actually going going beyond that you're taking the uh the basic you're taking the recommended in israel and you're doing even more investments so what what are those additional investments that you guys are making we're doing because of as because we're american citizens anything israel based if it's not direct stock direct stocks or direct um bonds anything that's like a fund is very problematic so we're, we need to invest into um u.s domestic funds as mostly US ETFs, which we're mostly doing following the S&P or the total stock market. So um, I, Eng most English speakers in Israel are probably familiar with uh, Facebook groups like, you know, the Living Financially Smarter Group, which is, of course, uh, has become very famous. So not everyone, as I understand in that group, has heard of FIRE. So within the FIRE community in Israel, are there like different Facebook groups or how do you guys interact with other fire FIRERs? Um, fire does exist in Israel, but I'm, I'm not quite sure how big it is. There are a few notable, um, fire people in Israel and we are in several Hebrew speaking fire groups and one English and one English speaking fire group for Israel. And there, that one has about 600 people in it. Yeah. Um, we're also in several Hebrew speaking fire groups. 
Like one of them is more real estate based. One of them is more stock market based. And those have tens of thousands of people in them. There's also Hasolidit, who tends to be more um, anonymous, anonymous, although her name has come out on things. Like a lot of these groups exploded in um, during the first lockdown. And that's true probably around the whole world. It's all of a sudden you locked down for like a month or two. And all of a sudden you're seeing the stock market went down 30 percent and then it went up 16 percent two weeks, three weeks later. And then everyone's saying, wow, what is this? Um, one perception that people have about um, living in any way financially responsibly is that it's going to be really, really kind of miserable and involve depriving yourself of fun in all respects. Um, so you guys are doing an awful lot of investing um, and the high cost of living in Israel. So does that not kind of put a real strain on the discretionary expenditure you guys might otherwise have? So there's a difference as, as I wrote, as we wrote in our blog, um, we used to be pretty low income and then we had a child that we had to send to daycare and we were really, really strapped and we were eating. We were trying to find all sorts of different ways to eat legumes and we were really struggling at that time. Um, and we did feel like we were suffering. But now in our journey to, to FI or to FIRE, first of all, this is a choice. And when it's a choice out instead of a necessity, it feels a lot different. We readopted some of the things that we used to do back then and not others that we didn't like. Like we so. don't, we stopped, we stopped making lentil burgers. Like, <laughs> no, it didn't work. Oh, um, yeah. In terms of enjoying life or whatever, we do have things that we like. For example, we love travel. We live for travel. That's something that's super important to us. Like, for example, our six and a half year old daughter has been to America four times. And she has been to Europe and she's been all the way up to Naharia. She's been all the way down to Elat twice. She's been all over Israel and our COVID baby has been to America twice. And Beicham. And he's been to Beicham. So it's about, it's not, you can't, you can't cut off all enjoyment because then you're never going to get to your goal. You have to say all the things that you enjoy, you have to find ways to do them anyway. And you have to you cut back on all the things that you don't care about. And then you focus on the things that you do. So travel is part of our budget. And then when we do travel, we find ways to do it more cheaply. We'll travel on off season. We'll travel low cost airlines. We'll go to cheaper cities. Like right now we're planning on going to Europe and we're going to end up in Bulgaria or Romania. Our kids aren't, they don't care where they're going. So we'll wait. It's about, no, it's about the quality <laughs> then. I have to say, I have to say, I, 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 t I totally, totally support your alternative uh, travel idea point that I made on this YouTube channel recently is about how dramatically the Open Skies Agreement has really re-architected aviation here in Israel. And I think people are still thinking in terms of the kind of classic destinations that are not, and there's a lot of great destinations in Eastern Europe. They're actually on my travel list as well. You mentioned Bulgaria, um, a few more of them that uh, they're basically, you know, if you can find the right ticket on Skyscanner or all the Israeli websites that exist, you can actually get some uh, get some really good bargains and it can really bring down the cost of traveling to less than Israel so, somehow. We went to Budapest in 2018. So uh, with our, our daughter at that point was the age of our son now. And we're trying to, we basically want to recreate that except that the costs have gone up and now we're another person. But yeah, we want to create recreate that vacation. And also another thing, for example, we don't have a car. We got rid of our car four oh, and a half years ago. But now we're incredibly fortunate that we have a city car. We have a, uh, a car sharing car right outside our house. And yeah, it costs more than the bus and it costs more than walking. But it saves a huge amount of time. He, he takes the bus to work. I walk to work or I walk from home. So in every month or two, we use this city car. We have um, car seats that are easy to install and we'll go somewhere rather than slipping on the bus. Like, so we do if... have access to the car. We do have access to the travel. We do go. We like to last summer, we went to a water park and we just found really cheap tickets. to a water park through our credit card. Like, but that is so, one of the things that we do also like the water park. It says at the front, you pay, if you pay at the front, you're paying 139 shekels. But on the website it says, if you order on our website before you come, you have already 20 shekels discount. But if you look through your credit card, you could get even half price or even through Groupon or Guru. Or so, the so we did, yeah. 
about about us not giving ourselves or enjoyments or that is, is we choose what's for us. We don't try to live according to what our friends are trying to tell us. We're doing this. Why aren't you doing that? Like we're living our lives and we're also not trying to live them in the moment. Like, yes, it's important to live the moment, but yeah, but you also need to really realize you not only you only you kind of live on what people call the YOLO moment of only you only live once. You need to worry about like in 20 years, like. But also you need to enjoy the journey. You need to join now. So you need to do a com- combination of both. I want to ask you guys, because we're obviously both living in Israel. Um, I did a video about uh, Carrefour that we were talking about before we started recording, and that created a lot of excitement with people thinking that, you know, this new international grocery store is going to drastically change food costs in Israel. Um, I'm just curious whether you guys have any sort of Israel specific hacks, whether it's shopping in a specific supermarket, avoiding Waltz, which I find personally to be the biggest financial uh, one of the biggest financial drains in my life. Uh, for those not in Israel, it's basically just a takeaway delivery service. So do you guys have any Israel specific hacks you can offer for other people here? Um, know the stores. Yeah. I mean, we have we have uh, at least two posts on our blog about um, how to save money grocery shopping, but you have to... What we do is we, we know which um, supermarkets tend to have the best prices on certain things. And then we rotate among the stores and stock up at each store to last once us until month. we get there again. We do we do a major shop once a month. Like we don't go every week. We do like once a month. For example, one of the Supercell, for instance, their imported cheese is 29 shekel a kilo. Then when Picoach today is like 44 shekel a kilo, I'm not exactly sure on the exact price. But like there is no, there. like the, if you avoid the name brands, you're going to find good quality and even the same quality. Like someone shared a week ago, two weeks ago, that Shufa sells um, tomato paste that they advertise on their name brand thing. It's our name brand is whatever. If you look in the back on where it's made, it's the same, it's in the same place of one of the main name brands that's made in Israel. It's the same thing. It's just, we made it specially for you. Oshara does that. Oshara has their own packaging. Instead of having the normal check one kilo packaging, they have a kilo and 1.4 kilos. They do the same thing. They just buy from the same product and throw the label on it. Everything in our house is um, no name brand. Not like everything. as much as we can. Most of the things is no name brand, but like, like a lot of people would say is, oh, I'm so used to buying Olsen and Olsen Hotel and all that. I cannot think about that. It's, than that, but like we do buy name brands, but like you also only, need only to only when there isn't uh, either there either the name brands are on sale, yes, or there is no alternative such as cottage cheese. There is no no, no yeah. name cottage cheese. There is no no name. Actually, there is no name milk, but it costs the same. No, there is no more no name milk. Super yeah. shot stopped uh, buying, stopped producing it this week oh. or last week. Okay. You guys mentioned on your blog that your end goal is to retire in your fifties. So it's out sort of disclosing too much about where you guys are in life. I understand you're somewhere in your 30s. You guys are working office jobs. So you guys have kind of about probably 10, 20 years more uh, to retire. So how did you guys decide upon 50, uh, that that decade as being your sort of end point for when you want to um, stop having to work in order to have to work? All right, so to get to the point where you do not need to work, the simple math is saying is, you need 300 salaries of your expected expenses. Then, then of that is, let's say you expect to need 20,000 shekel a month to live on. You need 6 million shekel of a nest egg. And from that, you're supposed to pull 4%. The, that does, the, if you, when you invest into the stock market, the stock market goes up more than 4%. It goes up between 7 to 10%. On average, so it that four percent should take in consideration of a normal inflation, not what we have today and most of the world of up to three percent inflation. So if you're putting four percent and there, and your portfolio is getting seven percent, your portfolio is never going down; it's always gaining. If you have inflation of five percent and the stock market is going down ten percent. You have a problem. We chose Tripsy because that's the because that's where we can get to. That's where we could get to when we want. That's when we would hit 
our goal of the number thing of our end goal is saying is we reached our number, we can retire. We can we project that we can reach the, that number by fifty. Um, we may actually reach it a little before fifty. We probably will because when we said fifty, it's being conservative of the stock market not going up. So. And also, I tend to be friends with all the sabas at work who are all talking about retirement, and I am terrified of H and and being in the workforce at 50, having to look for a job, let's say at 50, I would rather not be desperate to have that work out. Like I would like to not, choose. I would like to be able to choose by that point. Work, working back maybe just a little bit, you guys mentioned also in your blog that it was uh, when you became parents that you kind of, that was when the, uh, was that sort of when you guys decided that fire was what you wanted to do? What exactly is, is the connection between when you guys became parents? It started. We that's when we first had to take charge of our of our spending and of our finances. We were always low level investing, like I think you were before we met. We always were investing a few hundred shekels a month, even when we were because we were when we were newly married, we were each earning a little bit over minimum wage. And that's fine when you're just two people and we were going out to dinner and we were doing all sorts of stuff and we were totally fine. And then we, we came back from our honeymoon, spent about 20% more than we wanted. We spent a ridiculous amount on our honeymoon yes. to South Africa recommended. And, um, but having two slightly over minimum wage uh, incomes, while it can serve two people fine, it's harder to serve three people and spending uh, all the things that a baby needs and daycare. And suddenly it's really, really tight. So at that point, we started pulling all these strategies to save. We weren't increasing our, our investing at that point, but that's when we realized we have to be frugal. We have to pay attention to how much stuff costs. We have to track our expenses. We have to track our expenses. We have to lower our spending. That kind of led us through to today. And now that we're actively trying to lower our expenses in order to invest more, we are going back to a lot of those strategies that we had originally done and then abandoned. The ones that we enjoyed. The ones back. that we did not preventing ourselves from enjoying. Stuff that's like, okay, so we need to take an extra, go an extra 10 minutes of a ride, drive, bus ride to a supermarket instead of going across the street. So like, okay, so that's an extra 10 minutes. So if by that we're able to get a better deal and save a few extra hundred check in a month, so be it. But like, I think a big difference also was that we used to eat out all the time before yes. we had kids and we used to order in all the time. And then we stopped doing Damn, it. Damn, this was before Walt. Walt didn't exist Yeah, this yet. was before that. And then we stopped doing that and then we started doing that again. And then we had an ordering in budget of, I think, 500 check all month, which is like pretty normal, I would say. But we've pretty much eliminated that because we realized, oh, this money can be better used. And then yeah. we started and then, figuring out how to imitate all the things that we were ordering and just make them at home. And another thing that we were, we stopped doing was when our kids were in school on Friday, we would just go to the, go into town, walk into the mall or walk into Mac stock. And like you could walk into a Mac stock or equivalent and wanting to buy something for 20 shekels, you could come out with a 300 shekel bill and like... We like, and it's gone within a few hours or maybe not hours. Yeah. Maybe. Like shortly. Like, so just by saying it's not going out for the sake of going out, by stop doing that, you're also saving because once you actually step out of your house to a shopping area, it's very easy to be tempted to buy something. I called up all our providers and said, lower my rates, cancel my fees, cancel, like, I don't want to be paying extra money for stuff that I know I could get for free by just changing changing to someone else. And then all of a sudden, that's 300 check and more that I saved. And we saved a month. Well, that, that kind of thing, something we had um, spoken about is I think you had mentioned, Daniel, running a tight ship like in our preparation for this. And I was saying something when, when you have a ship, you need to waterproof your ship and make sure you have no leaks. So that's what we have done with our spending is we call up our service providers every 11 months. Uh, Finn does that and make sure that we get the best deals for everything. And we check our credit card bills and we make sure that there's no um, expenses that we don't Which recognize. we had one time. Because other people, they don't know where their money is going. And some people, they, they don't know where their money is going and they are literally, it's leaking. It's like leaking out of their ship. And 
then they get to the end of the month and they they don't know where it went. So that's we we patched we patched the leaks. I want to say as well, speaking to that point, that I think I did something a few months ago. I called up. Um, a credit card issuer, which in Israel we tend to have, as as you guys know, uh, Cal and Isracard, I believe. And by default, they will charge you something like 15 shackles a month just for the privilege of having a credit card on which you're paying interest on every single transaction. I called up the company and I heard this so many times it can be done. And I just said, can you guys waive the card? It's something that I never would have thought of to do, but it was actually a very kind of fluid conversation and it worked. So I'm sure having just you know, explore this one point, there are lots and lots of different charges um, that people are paying. And, you know, I I just want to say, I don't think it's predatory or cheap at all to be looking for better offers. That's why there's free market competition. And in the case of a credit card company paying you to maintain the privilege of charging you, it's a ridiculous charge. And it can be waived if you ask. You don't even really need to ask politely, but that never hurts. No, but you could also, like, a lot of these places have um, WhatsApp. You could just message them on WhatsApp. And 90%, like, that's how I get all, uh, like, to renew every 11th month, when every 11 months when I recontact them, I WhatsApp them. I don't wait online for them. I WhatsApp them, wait for them to respond to me because event, essentially there is someone who's responding to me instead of waiting online. I respond within a five minute uh, chatting with them on texting, the fees canceled for another year. You were saying it's not predatory. It's predatory on their end. Yes. Because we've had service providers where we threaten them. We ask them to, to lower the price and they don't do it. And then we leave and we switch to someone else. And as soon as we leave, they call us offering a lower price. And I always say, if you had this lower price to offer, you should have offered it when I asked you to lower it. Now it's too late. I want to ask you guys again, returning to the Israel specific context, um, we talked about budgeting and knowing where your money goes. I know there are a bunch of budgeting apps out there. Um, are there any you guys recommend that are Israel specific or, you, or do you just use general tools to keep track of your expenses? Well, we use for ourselves is um, we use Google Sheets, but a very popular one that came popular during the lockdowns was Rise Up. Um, let me just ask you one more question for someone looking to uh, get going on this fire journey, especially someone based in Israel. What, what would you advise someone perhaps like me who had, was running a very leaky ship with money going into Walt and Amazon and generally was bad at financial management? Uh, this seems like a very, very big goal uh, fire. But um, how, what would you say to someone like, you know, in this situation, probably hundreds of thousands of people in Israel like this in Israel uh, who are just, you know, looking for some encouragement to uh, to get going with this. So I actually, I went to breakfast with a friend on Friday and she, every time we hang out, she asks me about fire and she keeps saying how we're so inspirational and she wants to do it too. And I said, by virtue of the fact that you even want to do this and are looking even to start, you're way ahead of so many other people. And the fact that you know that you have a leaky ship is so much better than other people who don't know or don't care. So for someone who wants to start, um, and this is what I tell her all the time, you're already ahead of the game. You already have your pension. If you have a care niche, don't move. You already have your care niche, don't move. Um, the next thing to do is just to know how much money you're earning and how much money you're spending and know where all of your money goes. And then from there, like, uh, yeah, budget. Like if you're, from there, you if you're making 18,000 check and you're spending 20, you need to make sure you're under the 18 because Essentially, your ship, your 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 company of your own household. You need to make sure you always have extra money at the end of the month, so that your fridge broke tomorrow. You need to replace it. You're not going. You're not going to be broke or whatever going to overdraft. deep over overdraft to cover it. Basically, no. Like before, you people people get like so intimidated with all the things that they have to do, and. What I keep telling them is that, like, first know where you're at. Yes. That's a step into itself, and that's the most important thing. You have to know how much money is coming in, how much money is going out, and to where before you change anything. People get so intimidated that they have to change things that they don't even start. Like, I also we also have friends that say, oh, we finally have enough. We can start investing. And there isn't a time to start investing. Even if you have 100 shekels that you can invest, like, start. Because with the compound interest, you can start any time. It'll, it'll go. So Fiona and Finn, uh, you guys started a blog called The Finest Dream, which is a play on the Zionist dream for uh, financial matters. 
Um, tell me just a little bit about the blog and where uh, people can find out more um, about your authorship and your FIRE journey. Our blog is at um, www.finestdream.com. Finest is like Zionist with an F. We're on Facebook and we're on Twitter. Our, we blog about our journey to FIRE. It's We do have some personal updates. A lot of stuff is just how-tos. Um, we wanted our blog is both to be accountable for ourselves and um like for example we posted on the blog that we are planning a vacation to europe for the fall for under eight thousand shekel so now we have to have a vacation to no, that eight thousand shekel you're working hard on that yeah. i'm working hard on that but it's it's one um to keep us accountable and two to be a resource for people not everyone who reads our blog is seeking to achieve fire there are are a lot of things there. I would say most of the things there are just about how to save money. Those are actually the or posts. know how to get money back. Like a, yeah, those are the posts that you find a tax return. The the ones that are about investing, um, I feel like people people read those less. They have they're not as popular. But all of the ones of this is how you can with one phone call you can save money and you can save money here and save money there and get money back. Those are the popular ones. And that reaches everyone. Like that touches everyone. That's something that can help anyone whether they're whether they're um aiming for a fire or not. Cool. So Fiona and Finn, thank you guys so much for doing this YouTube interview. I hope for other folks um out there who are looking to do fire um that this will be of interest. And of course um there's finestream.com you guys can follow their journey and there's also um living i have to say a shout out to i believe it's called living frugally in israel do i have the group name right it's run by someone else i've met called adara and she is uh big into tips for frugal israel so these are facebook groups that uh people should definitely check out if you're on this journey to cut down on your expenditure and really find other people who are doing it because i think a big part of budgeting is not feeling ashamed about it and knowing there are other people out there who have similar objectives and just sharing tips and tricks. So thank you guys so much for uh, for coming on this uh, this little YouTube channel and good luck with the blog and uh, thanks for sharing your wisdom with people. Thank you. Thank you so much, Daniel.